Three short science stories for Valentine's Day. First up, most massage neurons. In January, a Caltech team reported finding a group of neurons in mice which responded to gentle touch, leading news articles to label them massage neurons. The team would pinch, poke, or stroke the back leg of a mouse and watch which neurons fired. They found a group of neurons that responded only to the light stroking touch and another group that responded only to pinching. Then things took a slightly weird turn and researchers created mice whose gentle touch neurons could be activated chemically. They then exposed the mice to two different chambers. In one chamber, the mice would be injected with just saline. In the second chamber, they would be injected with a chemical that would activate their gentle touch neurons. Not surprisingly, the mice developed a preference for the chemical massage chamber. Nature News notes that stimulating these neurons also helped alleviate symptoms of anxiety in these mice, as any good mouse massage should. These neurons resemble similar sensors in humans, which may explain why we too enjoy massages. Next up, humans buy each other chocolate on Valentine's Day, but jays have to work with something a little more wriggly. Cambridge researchers took pairs of mated jays and put them into separate adjoining chambers. In one chamber, the female was fed one specific kind of larva, either wax moth or mealworm, and if you were a jay, this would sound like a real treat. The males watched the females feeding, and when the two birds were reunited, the males were presented with both kinds of larva. The researchers found that the males chose to present the female with whichever type of squirmy treat they had not previously been eating. Instead of giving her the same kind of larva she had already been eating, he decided to present her with a treat. The researchers noted that the male had to watch the female be fed and become satiated with the first kind of larva before offering her the second. He had to know that she had had her fill of the first kind. The team therefore claimed that the bird might be able to ascribe desire to the other animal and that this may be an important part of a pair bonding ritual. Food sharing is important between jays and knowing which kind of larva his lady might like might help the male prove himself as a more desirable mate. And finally, do you know how lobsters flirt? They pee out of their heads. Yes, these stories are getting progressively less sexy. Thanks for noticing. So lobsters can't talk to each other, but when two lobsters meet, sometimes they need to communicate. Now sometimes that communication can be aggressive, a male lobster telling another male to get out of his cave. But other times that communication can be a little flirty, a female lobster waltzing over and saying, hey, you know, I'm about to molt soon, shed my shell, harden up a new one, maybe I could come in and that could happen and we could make like 50,000 little lobster babies and that'd be okay, right? So those are two very different messages, but lobsters communicate both of them with pheromones. Now lobsters have their bladders up near the front of their body, and they can mix pheromones in with their urine and project it forwards out of two nephropores using their gill currents. And depending on which pheromones the lobsters mix in with their urine, they can convey aggression or flirtation. So this Valentine's Day, take a cue from the animal kingdom. Give a massage or some larva or... Okay, you know what? Maybe just stick with those little conversation hearts. Go forth. Do science.